Hello, it's Balter from of Balter's Control Systems again. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the custom strategies feature of the uh, electronic uh, controllers that I develop. Uh, this feature is currently offered by all of my product range. Um, what are the uh, custom strategies? Uh, it is a way to supplement the ECU firmware with apps that add functionality not otherwise present in the base firmware. These apps can be modifying the way the engine is run. They can be controlling engine accessories such as power adders. Uh, they can be implementing chassis or traction control or just doing deep integration with uh, the car's other electronics. Um, the key is uh, it allows the ECU's functionality to be expanded on a case-by-case -case basis without having to go through the process of releasing uh, special firmware for each application. It has also proven very useful to prototype features that later get included in the base firmware. These apps can be written by an advanced end user or by a tuner dealer or, or by, my, by my company or any combination thereof. Um, since the last video in this series, I have further developed the system to make it a lot more pleasant to use. It is now it no longer requires manually writing JSON data structs to describe the way variables are stored and presented, but instead there are graphical interfaces for this now. Um, let me walk you through writing a small program. What this program is going to do is simply add a table to the ECU and look up values from the table which are going to produce a variable frequency output which could for example be hooked up to a motor inverter to drive a three-phase motor. Um, Okay, let's get started. Uh, this this example is running on an MPC1 control box, but uh, the same syntax applies to all of my products. Um, I'm going to start by going into the code toolbox and create a variable to keep the uh, output of the table lookup function. We'll just simply call that output frequency. It's going to be a 16-bit integer, unsigned, because I don't believe in negative frequencies. Units is hertz, and since the 16-bit value goes up to 65,000, and uh, I'm not interested in frequencies that high, I'm going to scale it down by a tenth, to give us more uh, resolution at the, the l lower frequencies. And subsequently I'll put one digit after the decimal point uh, so that we can see the extra granularity. Now that that's done, I'll go into the configuration toolbox and create the configuration that our uh, that our uh, program needs. I'll start by adding a category. Let's just call that category tables and I'll add another category for uh, breakpoints. Um, We'll insert a an item here, which is going to be our uh, our table, and make a type table uh, display name frequency, and here's a new thing. I'm I'm able to 
create the variable from from the tree editor. Let's call our table that's going to be a 16-bit integer. And because I've already created a variable to keep the output of the table, I can I can just uh, find that in here, and that will populate the settings for our uh, our config to the same unit and, and so on. And uh, since it doesn't make sense to keep this as an input variable, because it's the other way around, I'm going to uncheck that, let the settings stay in place. Um, I'm going to give this table uh, 64 points. And uh, for simplicity, I'll, I'll make that just hard coded. Um, and it's going to be 8 by 8. That looks good. Now we need x and y uh, axis breakpoints. I'm going to create them here also. Um, for our x axis, I'm going to make it just. Uh, I'm going to use an input variable. It's going to be our road speed. And x axis. That's going to be eight uh, values, and th that looks good. For y axis, I'm going to use uh, analog input zero. So I'll make that a 16 bit integer and select analog zero. Eight values, that's okay. Now, um, our table, remove that from here and uh, place that, actually I'll remove the table and paste it here. I'll edit this, just make this new breakpoints. Remove and to the breakpoints category, I'm going to place the uh, the axis variables that I created earlier. And they are displayed in the orphan list as there's nothing representing them in the, in the config. So it's an item there. And axis x axis, and that's going to be a list. And do that again. Y axis. That looks good. Yes, commit the changes. And now we're ready to start writing the program. Um, I'm going to make the program run. Uh, the lookup function 100 times per second. So I'll make a callback function called, let's call it CP100, name doesn't matter. And uh, I'm going to create an init function. Every program needs to have an init function. Uh, when the program starts up, the init function is called. And uh, once the init function exits, uh, there's no, you know, the program does not get called again unless the init function specified so. And uh, the init function, is, all of the functions in in the program are expected to not to block. Uh, they're supposed to be uh, not blocking, so uh, so they are they are uh, so the program the program flow is uh, callback based. Um, we find our callback 100 hertz. Uh, 
destination was, that's going to be CP100. Now we have a, a good init function. Uh, next is our output frequency. Double click that, that gets populated into the editor. And um, that's going to need a table lookup function. I'm going to use table lookup 16 because it's a 16 bit unsigned table. And you see it, it, it accepts uh, seven arguments that I'm going to populate. Lookup 16. And it's going to be, the table is going to be our table. And then the x axis and the y axis. There's eight points on each axis. Um, the x axis is uh, our road speed. Find that here. And the y axis is analog zero. Um, now, if, if uh, all I was going to do was uh, transmit this info over canvas or something like that, uh, we'd be done. But because I'm going to create a frequency output, uh, we're not done. Um, to calculate, uh, I, need to, I need to, well, uh, the output of the lookup function, the, the table contains uh, frequency numbers, but uh, to create an output, I need to convert the frequency to uh, a time period. So I'm going to create a, a variable that I use for the calculation. Let's call it just temp. And uh, since our f output frequency is in units of uh, tenth of a hertz, and the uh, timers in the ECU are uh, one megahertz, uh, to convert the the uh, frequency to uh, microseconds, I'll have to divide ten million by the frequency value. So I'll put that here. I'll put frequency uh, 10 million divided by the output frequency. We are period. Um, I'm going to assign that to an output to use the user pwm period one equals tmp and i will also have to assign a pulse width and that's going to be i'm going to make it 50 percent juicy cycle uh, so the pulse width is going to be half of the period using a bit shift function to divide by two. Um, now, if the frequency is, is zero, this is not going to make sense. So I'm just going to make every frequency below five hertz, uh, turn the output off. So I'll put a condition here if, if uh, I'll just do it before the calculation. If RT output frequency is greater than 50, which is 5 hertz, since it's in, in units of tenth of a hertz, it will do that. Else, we're going to make the, the, the period just a thousand doesn't matter and the pulse width is going to be 
zero. Um, that looks good. Let's see if it compiles. If it compiles. Go back here. Now we have our have our breakpoints here. In road speed. Let's populate that up to two hundred. And analog. Let's populate that. Um, I want to keep an out eye on the output of this. So uh, let's go into create a widget with our output frequency. And let's also create a widget to look at uh, analog zero. And another one to look at the road speed. Um, I think we are ready to... Uh, no, actually, let's... Uh, we, we still have to assign this to an output. So it's pro user program pwm1. And now we're ready to send this program to the MPC1. Start, communicate, send values to controller. And I'm going to make one reset. Now there's a variable in here that we can, a couple of them we can look at. User PG, PGM error is zero. That means the, the virtual machine that runs the program hasn't exited. And user PGM status two means the program has started up and is running. Let's try populating our, uh, our table with some values. Let's put them all to 50. Yeah, that looks good. Let's make it zero at the bottom and go up to 50 maybe, yeah. Now I'll, I'll increase the value of, uh, of the analog input and and the frequency follows. Um, that's it for now. I, I hope you uh, I hope, hope you see the uh, utility in all of this. And uh, if you want your ECU to perform a control function that is not uh, supported by other systems on. Sure, I can help you make it happen.